Now, regular viewers of The Daily Politics may have watched this on Wednesday lunchtime. George Galloway. Following... Following... Following yesterday's announcement, will the Prime Minister Adam break for the House? The key differences between the hand-chopping, throat-cutting jihadists fighting the dictatorship in Mali that we are now to help to kill, and the equally bloodthirsty jihadists that we are giving money, materiel, political and diplomatic support to in Syria. Has the Prime Minister read Frankenstein? And did he read it to the end? Well, some things come and go, but there is one thing that is certain. Wherever there is a brutal Arab dictator in the world, he'll have the support of the Honourable Gentleman. Now, that was David Cameron's response. It caused a little bit of an upset, actually. Some viewers to our programme thought it was a tad rude. Uh, we tried to get Adam Brait, Mr Adam Brait, to join us today, but he was unavailable. <laughs> Instead, we have the Respect MP, George Galloway. He's the man who asked the question. He's got the same excellent suit and waistcoat, but not the tie. I lost you're, the tie. I only wear ties in the... Friday morning dressing. Uh, now, when you summer. asked that question, did you not think that 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 you were opening yourself to that the response that you got well not from that particular pot to call this kettle black when he promptly flew off to pose for pictures with the dictator of algeria and is busily selling as many weapons as he can to every brutal arab dictator that will pay uh, no but in any case vulgar abuse uh, does not an answer make and what your viewers have been saying to you uh, is of a par with what's being said to me, that actually that's quite an interesting question. I wonder what the answer is. David Cameron certainly didn't give it. I mean, he certainly, I mean, as all Western governments are vulnerable to having supported Arab dictators. Um, but I guess people could say is, well, you've got your dictators and he's got his dictators. Well, the British state is in the front of uh, marketing weapons and giving diplomatic and political support both to brutal Arab dictators and jihadists in Syria. And I was merely asking, is it a case of good al-Qaeda in Syria and bad al-Qaeda in Mali? Because, of course, we've been down this road before. You and I, perhaps uniquely on this platform, uh, are old enough to remember when we used to hail and arm and finance other jihadists who later became al-Qaeda in Afghanistan mm. in the 1980s. That's the question, not uh, my views on but this or that Arab government, let, let but me, whether the British state should be doing this. Let me just unpeel a bit the, uh, the, the jihadists in Mali, in northern yeah. Mali, and those who are fighting the government in Syria at the moment. It seems pretty clear that the jihadists had taken control of a movement in northern uh, Mali, which had originally been for autonomy. It was the Tuareg tribals and so on. But they had taken control and were heading south. They were calling the shots by then. Even the Tuareg tribesmen admit that. There is no doubt the Yahadis are part of the uprising in Syria, mm. but they're not in any means in control. Well, the New York Times thinks they are. Uh, and the State Department talked nearly a year ago about the flicker of al-Qaeda, which oh. has now become a flame. Uh, the Even that doesn't mean them in control. Indeed, well, they've the been people, attacked by the, the people, people who, who are at the top of the insurgency at the moment. Well, those chaps that you see on the news every night, especially if you watch Sky, uh, chanting Allahu Akbar and uh, lining up prisoners to cut their heads off, indeed videoing themselves cutting people's heads off, sound pretty dangerous to me. And I just think it's uh, a Frankenstein monster that's being created, was created in the 80s in Afghanistan. And if you have read, as you will have, as written by a Scotswoman, Mary Shelley, Frankenstein's monster, the modern Prometheus, you'll know that it's called a monster because you can't control it once you've built it. And the monster's not called Frankenstein either. No, indeed. Uh, does this then lead you to support Assad? No, I don't support either the jihadists or Assad. But you seem I very simple. I mean, I, I'm not going to look through it all, but the, our research teams come up with plenty of quotes with you being pretty friendly to Mr. Assad and pretty from, friendly to the dictatorship of Syria. Well, from the, fr that's from 2005, I think. You, you quoted these things at me again. That's at the time he was riding around in a carriage with the Queen 
up the mall and sleeping in her spare room. No, I support Kofi Annan. A spare room. I just want to <laughs> One of our get, spare rooms. Just want to check yes. that it was a spare room. Oh, I support Kofi Annan's plan to have a negotiated transition to democracy in Syria. I just don't think it's wise to be paying and arming and bringing in legions of throat cutters and hand choppers into Syria, a country you know is a very complicated one with Indeed. lots of religious and ethnic Huge. minorities and in a strategically very explosive place. So what do you make then of your... Uh I'll be provocative for a change. You have your mates in Iran sending Assad all the support. Well, we're sending the enemies of Assad support and Russia, we, we Britain, uh, Britain and its uh, American uh, master. But well, we're not and sending any arms or weapons to well, the Well, we're giving rebels. them money. If you give them money, you're giving them arms. They Pardon, can do, they can do with the money uh, what, they, what they like. But you're not but, disputing. But, 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 the, but the Iranians are sending serious weapons yeah. and even revolutionary guards have been sent well, there. Well, you know, serious weapons won't do Assad any good. You're fighting in the streets, hand to hand, with these jihadists. Serious Keep weapons. On saying, I, and I, I understand, I'm not arguing with you that mm. there aren't jihadists involved in the struggle against mm. Assad, but I think you have to admit that they are not the leaders in this or even the majority of the uprising. No, I don't accept that uh, at all. You're right if you say that they're not all jihadists. The Syrian people had plenty to revolt about. Syrian people had plenty to rise up about. And they had the same right to do so as any people in the world have the right to. But no one who seriously studies this is in any doubt that the fighting is being done by foreign jihadists in the main. And they will inherit the power. The people who uh, do the fighting are the people who come to power. And it's wise of you not to dispute that central point because the time will come if they win when we'll be sitting here talking about their latest atrocity, perhaps across the border in the UK and US's favorite country, Israel. You uh, were pretty keen after you won your by-election of calling it the Bradford Spring. Mm. You seem a bit less keen on the Arab Spring. No, I'm absolutely behind the Arab Spring. The difference between me and the government is I've been calling for it for the last 35 springs. I've been asking and calling for a revolution in the Arab world always, and it's a messy business. You can't make omelets without breaking eggs. So how would you describe its progress so far, say well, in Egypt or Libya? In, in Egypt, it's not going well. In Tunisia, it's going better. In Libya, it's a thoroughgoing disaster. This thing is a disaster in uh, totally. Libya. And this is a classic case. We hated Gaddafi, then we loved Gaddafi. Then we uh, delivered uh, the jihadists to Gaddafi to be tortured. Then we backed those jihadists to overthrow Gaddafi. And now those jihadists have killed the American ambassador in Benghazi and we've just evacuated all our people uh, from there. Will you be happy when Mr. Assad goes? Yes, I think the people of Syria need to choose uh, a, fa a, a, a ruler who's not part of the same family as the, uh, the dynasty that they've mm. had for 40 years there. I think we need democracy in Syria and we need it in Saudi Arabia and we need it in all Arab countries. But you don't get democracy by bombing countries from afar, uh, neither do you get it by interposing jihadists of the Al-Qaeda stripe. Final question before I bring in our, our, our guests who've been p listening patiently. Were the French right to intervene in Mali? No, uh, they're the last people, uh, given their colonial history. You know that Mali used to be called French Sudan. Sure. Uh, and uh, it, they looted Mali. Uh, of as much as they could carry, including the people of Mali. But the people of Mali seem to be rather happy to see them. Well, some of them do, the ones that the Western cameras uh, find uh, to put on the news. You think but that's unrepresentative? I do. 90% uh, of Malians are Muslims. You don't think uh, the BBC would, if someone said, we don't want the French here, you don't think we'd run that? Uh, no, because you're not seeking out, the, and neither are they coming forward, I have no doubt. Uh, it's not a good time to come forward. But with if the all French these hadn't intervened, it was quite clear that they were going to take the whole of Mali. The, 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 the throat-cutting, no, hand-chopping yeah. jihadists well, that you were complaining about. I, d I don't think that's necessarily true because, as you rightly said, it's much more complicated than that. The Tuareg people have uh, legitimate demands that they've been making for decades, mm. long before al-Qaeda ever existed. But, but uh, the, the, the point is, Andrew, that these, uh, these, uh, the government of Mali is a military dictatorship. Sure. We are backing the military dictatorship. Oh, no, it's an ugly baby contest. People are against it, and we'll see what happens. And when okay. terrible things start happening, 
Don't say you weren't warned. Well, that's the trouble, though, isn't it? Because the, no matter if you try and understand the situation, it entirely depends how far back in history you go as to where you think allegiances should be. And it becomes more and more complex. I mean, what, what would be the right thing for the government to do, our well, government to do? Uh, well, I'm not sure that Mali is something that ought to be occupying our government at the moment. Our economy... It had to our, occupy our why, government. Why? Because it's a of far the away, incident that happened It's a, a faraway country ago. in North Africa. It contains no threat to us whatsoever. We have no historical relationship with it whatsoever. And we're broke. We can't, <laughs> we can't keep our pensioners warm in the wintertime. But we're ready to help France set fire to Mali. It just doesn't compute. And are we really... Go I, mean, I wouldn't give my son's life in Mali. And I know that you wouldn't either. But we're expecting other people to send their children to okay, go there and me. fight. David. Yeah, the difficulty here is the, 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 the complex issues and um, we, we, we view it all with hindsight. I mean, we look at Afghanistan now and say, if only we hadn't gone in, but what would have happened if we hadn't gone in 10 years ago? Um, and and my, my question to you would be, well, do we just sit and do nothing? There are people suffering in, in Syria. I think we probably would go in if we thought it was a safe uh, Thing to we do, and we had, if we had we the money, it, and we had the money and the stomach for it, it, but we don't have to Iraq, do we? Look, there are bad things happen all over the world. We are a small country of 65 million off the northwest coast of Europe that is virtually bankrupt in triple dip recession. It would be better if the British government concentrated on fixing our own problems here at home. All right.